Hey guys, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to share my honest review of an all-in-one online business platform called System and whether it lives up to all the promises, features, and benefits as stated on their website and its Trustpilot score of 4.8 stars out of five on Trustpilot. First of all, I wanna be 100% transparent and let you know this is a paid sponsorship. System approached me to share my thoughts and opinion of their tool, but they had zero import in terms of talking points and what I need to cover. So what you're about to see is my 100% unbiased, honest opinion of the tool and whether it's right for you. So with that said, let's get on with the video. To start off with, what exactly is System? The best way to describe it, and based on my usage of System in the past week, I see it as an all-in-one system to sell your products, especially when it comes to digital products. On the website, you'll see what tools they offer. You can create things like sales funnels, build your email list with the email marketing built in, it's a website builder as well. You can also integrate an affiliate program, so get getting other affiliates to promote your products. It's got business automation, evergreen webinars. You can host online courses, start a blog, and also sell your products. When it comes to all-in-one systems and platforms, I'm rather skeptical because you can't be great at every single aspect of that particular platform or tool. It's like that saying where you're a generalist and a specialist or when you're good at everything but a master of none. So doing this review, it came from the notion and perspective of being someone who's quite skeptical of these all-in-one platforms. So I kept a mental note as I was actually going through the features and the tools and in general, the whole system. The biggest advantage I see with these all-in-one systems is exactly that, it's all-in-one. You don't need a multitude of different tools and subscriptions that add up in costs. Things like email marketing, a website and web hosting, a landing page builder, and a course hosting website. Another advantage of these all-in-one platforms is that all of the different tools integrate with one another without any conflict. And in general, the disadvantage as stated, these all-in-one platforms may not be great or a master of that one aspect of an online business platform. Another downfall, but one that's quite rare, is that because you're hosting everything on that one platform, you're putting your eggs in one basket. But those are some general things to know about all-in-one platforms before you consider signing up to one. The biggest standout of System is that they offer a free plan, including their entire suite of tools. System's pricing and plans page show everything that you get. With the free plan, you can build up to 2,000 contacts. You can send unlimited amount of emails, unlike some email marketing platforms where sometimes they charge based on the amount of emails that you send. You can create up to three different sales funnels, you can have up to 10 steps in your sales funnels. Create one blog, which is more than enough, especially if you're just getting started. I mean, I can hardly handle one blog myself. You can host up to one course and that's more than enough, especially if you're just a beginner getting started and going out there to sell your first course. In addition to that, you can have unlimited students and bear in mind students and contacts is different. So with contacts that has more to do with email marketing, sending email marketing campaigns to 2000 people, up to 2000 people. Whereas students is if you sell your online course, you can have unlimited students. Another one worth mentioning is unlimited file storage. So let's say you've got an online course and you've got multiple videos that you need to host. They don't charge you based on the amount of gigs that you're actually using. You get unlimited storage. And a few other benefits like automations, workflows, tags, email campaigns, you can do order bumps, AB split testing, and much more. But as you can see, you get the entire suite of products. The main difference is the amount of things that you can actually create like sales funnels and courses. Signing up to System is really simple and easy to get started. If you look in the description box below, I'll provide my link, it's an affiliate link, but you're free just to go to system.io, sign up and click on get started for free. You'll need to enter your email address and then after that, you'll receive this confirmation email. You simply click that and then it'll prompt you to create your password. Just for perspective, let's say you build an email list of 5,000 people or contacts. With System, on their monthly plan, you're only going to pay $27 per month. Whereas with a popular email marketing platform such as ActiveCampaign with 5,000 contacts, you're going to be paying $99 per month on their light plan. All right, moving on, let's get into the nitty gritty of System and check out the actual dashboard and some of the tools. We'll start with the dashboard, really simple, easy, clean, you know, quite minimal in my opinion, almost nothing else except 
new leads and sales. On the right, you've got the custom range date that you can set so you can see what stats you want to appear. You've also got live updates right here. Bear in mind that with the dashboard, you can go to the main dashboard or your affiliate dashboard. Now an affiliate dashboard is more so you being an affiliate promoting other people's products on system because they do have a marketplace. So if you click on marketplace, you'll see a range of products that are actually listed in systems marketplace. You can promote any of these products, but it's quite new or most people don't really have their products featured in the marketplace here. So I'm not sure why I can see that there are only 45 info products. Going to the affiliate dashboard, quite similar to the main dashboard, you're given your stats, stats by vendor or total sales in general. Moving on, let's go into contacts because this is going to be one of the primary locations for managing your actual subscribers. Right off the bat, you can see all your subscribers here going to different pages or sorting them by the number of contacts to see per page. The number of contacts that you have, you can also filter by email, first name, last name, and many of these other filters. You can add contacts by clicking on create a contact. So adding one single contact at a time, entering their details, and then selecting the tags that you want associated to that actual subscriber. If you've got an existing email list or you want to switch over to system, you can always import them by firstly, exporting them out of your existing email marketing platform and then going to system, clicking on import contacts. Going into an individual subscriber or contact, you can click it and then make any modifications you'd like, such as their name, their city address. You can select different tags or deactivate a certain tag. It also shows how they subscribe with the source URL and the squeeze page. Creating more tags is quite simple. Go to contacts, go to tags, and from the top corner, you add a new tag. While we're on the subject of subscribers and leads, let's head to emails, the email marketing platform before we go into funnels. So under emails, let's start with newsletters. Newsletters are for sending one-off emails that get sent out in a broadcast format with campaigns, on the other hand, you're creating an email series. So if you want a sequence, let's say on day one, lesson one goes out, day two, lesson two goes out. If you wanna create something like that, that's where campaigns comes in. But with newsletters, if you wanna send out broadcasts, or let's say you've got a marketing promotion going out tonight, then that's what you wanna to use. To create one, all you need to do is click on create a newsletter and quite straightforward. First, you start with the subject line. So I've got my subject line, you enter your sender name and email address. However, you can set defaults for these in your account settings. Choose from a visual editor or a classic editor. If you want something that is more, you know, with colors and your branding and all that, you wanna choose a visual editor, whereas classic is just plain text. But let me create one just to show you what it looks like. This is what the email is going to look like. You can modify anything you want. It is in a way a WYSIWYG editor. So what you see is what you get, what you click on, you can just modify, change it, you know, bold text, change the sizes. If you click on save changes, that'll save changes obviously. But one thing I noted, right, when you click on save changes, nothing else happens. And I think that's something that could be improved on in terms of user experience. How do I know what to do next if it doesn't actually tell me or show me or take me to that next step? So what you actually have to do is click on exit, even though that sounds like you're going to pretty much exit and go somewhere else. What you're actually going to do is move on to the next step, which is this. You can schedule your broadcast and set your segmentations, including your tags, who are you going to send this email out to? Do you wanna send it to your newsletter subscribers, those with the podcasting tag, productivity tag. Of course, these are all my custom tags that I created. But let's say you wanna send it out to your main newsletter, you can set it with that. Send emails only to contacts registered over so-and-so amount of days. So let's say only after they've you know been subscribed for as a subscriber for 30 days. You can set that there. You can also exclude certain tags and use some of these variables, which they call substitutes. So if you wanna include uh, the subscriber's first name, that's only if you've actually collected these details. You can add that in, in let's say the top of your email. But that's one thing I noticed that is lacking the email segmentation, quite a downfall, because I wanna be able to be flexible and have that option to send out to an advanced you know, kind of filter. I wanna send out 
to those who actually click this link, who purchase this product and also open their email in the last six months or something like that. You can sort of work your way around it using automations, which we'll run through, but it would have been nice to have it in this area where you can set your segmentations, add your tags, and then schedule it all in one place. But let's say you are ready to send your email. You can save and then send a test email, and that'll send it to your associated email address for testing. So you can see making sure that everything looks all good. But once you are ready, click on save and schedule newsletter. That'll take you to this page where you can, again, send a test uh, email address or schedule your newsletter at a certain date and time. But if you are ready to send your newsletter, all you need to do is hit that send button and then it'll do the rest for you. Going back into newsletters, you'll see a dashboard and statistics of your open rate, your click-through rate, and the date that was it was sent. Nothing more to it than that, but going to campaigns, this is where you can actually create your email series. So I've created some dummy ones. I've got one called My Free Ebook. You can see what I've done. I've got this first email going out straight away. You can see the delay, there's zero minutes, which means immediately. Lesson one goes out one day after it. Lesson two goes out another day after it. It was quite easy for me to set up these emails. All I needed to do is add an email, Quite similar to creating a newsletter, all you need to do is enter a subject line. Let's say in this case, lesson number three, choose your visual editor, or you can duplicate a previous email, let's say from lesson two or one, create it. You'll be taken to the editor. I'm just going to save changes. And this is where you can set the actual delay, let's say one day after the previous. So one day after lesson number two. There are also different settings like time when email should be sent. You can send it at a particular time, let's say 9 a.m. every time, or days of the week when this email should be sent. So Monday, Tuesday, let's say you don't want to send on weekends, you can also set that. Click on publish, and now you see lesson number three right after number two. So really simple to use. I don't have any complaints in terms of the actual ease of use of creating an email series. All right, with email marketing out of the way, let's talk about funnels because this is one of the fun parts, right? Building our sales pages, our landing pages, opt-in pages. Uh, depends how you see it actually. If you feel this is a fun part, yeah, that's great. But let's go ahead and show you how it looks like. So. I created three different funnels just to play around with, but one is this one right here, Productivity for Creators. This is what it looks like. So it starts with a free ebook. So you can create a full-fledged funnel where you offer something for free and then have an upsell or upgrade later on. If they don't take up on that, you can offer a downsell and then send a related offer and then to their thank you page. So this is what you see. One thing I wish they had is a visual editor or more so a visual uh, representation or a flow of your whole sales funnel that you create uh, with system. So with this, I can only see in a kind of logical linear form. So it's quite linear where it's free ebook. And then after that, um, they see a sales page. So I've got two different sales pages because there's a feature for AB split testing where you can split test from uh, one page versus another. And then you've got the actual order form and then an upsell, upsell number two, which you can also do. And then if they don't take up on the upsell number two, there's a downsell. And if they don't take the downsell, then you can offer something related. But this is just a dummy kind of funnel that I created. You don't necessarily have to have a complex one like this, you know, and then you've got your thank you page. But starting with, let's say the free ebook, you can create a squeeze page. Uh, set your URL path. Um, let's go to edit because I wanna show you how the actual uh, page builder looks like. This is one of their templates that I used and you've got your headline, you've got your form and then your button. Uh, one thing that I was a little uh, confused about and maybe I, it was more easier to spot than I realized is how do you actually integrate you know, your email marketing, your form, your opt-in form with the page builder right here, but it's actually simpler than I thought. If you simply click the opt-in form or the button more, so let's see here. So I've clicked it, you can see action when button clicked, uh, what happens next? So you can send send them the, or send the form, you can show a pop-up, open a URL, uh, go to the next step of the URL and so on and so forth. But what you want happening is to send the form. And then do you want to redirect users 
after contact registration, uh, what do you want happening? So that goes to the next step, which in my case is that thank you page or uh, actually more so the actual sales page. So you set your kind of flow right within that same page builder. So it's actually a good thing because you don't have to go outside, copy and paste a certain code or placeholder or short code onto your actual um, opt-in form right here, right? Uh, unlike WordPress and something like Elementor where you have to go and grab that opt-in form code and then paste it in using uh, manual HTML code. But let's backtrack a bit because I wanna show you how to actually create a funnel if you go to funnels and let's create a new funnel. It's all about just clicking that plus button and let's say demo funnel. Uh, what do you wanna do? You wanna build an audience, sell a product or service, uh, create a custom one from scratch or run an evergreen webinar. So it gives you those options and then it then uh, inserts those templates based on what you select. Let's say you want to sell a product. We'll click on sell, select your currency, click on create. It will automatically create that step of an order form and a thank you page. So that's the only difference. Otherwise you can start from scratch. But from here you can set your template for your order form. Let's say you like this one right here. You can preview it. Let's see what it looks like. Quite simple, quite basic. You can also look through some other ones. Let's say this one here looks a lot cleaner, looks a lot better. But let's say I like that one. All you need to do is click on select. You then set your resources, things like your PDFs, your eBooks, your zip files, anything that you are meant to deliver to your customer after they purchase. So you click that plus button, select your resource, but you have to add those resources first. So let's say they get access to one of your online courses. You select course and then choose a course. I'll select digital marketing for beginners and then choose a course access type. You want them to get full access or drip content, we'll select full access. So now what's gonna happen is after they actually purchase, they'll get access to this course called Digital Marketing for Beginners. Below that, you have to set your pricing plans. It's a little confusing because if you are selling a one-off product, it sounds a little uh, confusing as plans. So I would call it uh, pricing, just keep it simple. That's one thing I got confused about. But with price plan type, you select one shot if that's a one-off uh, payment. Otherwise you can select subscription or a payment plan. Choose a price plan and you have to set these first. So did not find the right plan. So you have to create a new one. If you create a new one, that'll take you, pop up a new window. You enter that price plan name, price plan name for the payment page for your customers to see. Statement descriptor, the type, a one shot, things like that. So you add that in. And once you have that, all you need to do is then select that actual pricing plan. Let's say it's this one right here. You also have the ability to add coupons and an order bump. So if you want to bump up the order, let's say, do you want to add uh, another copy of this or you know something else if you want to cross sell, you can do that with uh, order bumps. There are some other tabs here and options like automation rules. So more advanced if you want that feature like adding a different rule. Let's say when a new sale occurs, then this will happen. So you add the action. Let's say when that customer does buy, you can subscribe them to a specific campaign. Let's say a special uh, customer you know, introduction or a, a, a series of emails that educates them on that particular subject of that course. And as you saw, you can do A-B split tests where you're testing against one page versus another to then see which one uh, does better or converts more customers. You also set your thank you page. So that page where they can download all the deliverables and what they uh, go for, or you can simply uh, set a page that says thanks for purchasing. Um, but what happens is uh, when you do sell, let's say an online course, you will that your customers will receive an email letting them know to create a password. This is what the email looks like after someone purchases, let's say an online course. I did a test purchase, it sent this, and it says to log in, please set a new password. So quite straightforward. I don't know exactly how to actually customize this email or if this email can actually be edited. And if it can't, then that's quite a downside because you wanna be able to make it your own and perhaps with your branding and of course your wording. Let's say you wanna create a sales page before the actual order form. We create a step 
And then from the options, we say sales page and then choose a type. We scroll down. So you can see there's opt-in options, uh, sales page options. We'll click on sales page. And what will appear are some sales page templates to choose from. One thing I wish system had done is keep the actual template design consistent with the rest of the actual pages from the opt-in form to the thank you page, to the sales page, the upsell pages. For now, it is quite, uh, it's different. You know, every page that you see right here, let's say you select this one, there's no actual matching thank you page for it that looks similar to it. So therefore you're going to have to build it from scratch or make modifications to those other pages. But let's say you like this one right here, we'll click on select. You can set the URL path. And by the way, you can actually set a custom domain name if you simply go to your account settings, which we'll cover later on. But for now, what we're going to do is click on edit page and you'll see again, how the editor works quite similar to everything else from the email uh, newsletter creation to the opt-in um, page creation, all looks quite similar. There are different elements that you can add, simply drag and drop. Let's say you want uh, headline text, sim simply drag it with your mouse. Now you've got a new headline that you can modify to different sizes and different font styles. There are also blocks, so pre-made kind of blocks that you can drag and drop rather than starting from scratch. So if you want an opt-in form there, let's go into features because there are a range of different feature blocks that you can add such as this four column one. Let's scroll down somewhere around here and let's see if we can drag it to that section. Uh, we'll just drop it and see where it goes. Yeah, we usually you do have to add a section and then within that section, you add that particular block. But this is what it looks like and you can modify it, add different images, replace it. If you do make a mistake, you can always undo it by clicking undo, undo again, that's gone. One thing that is lacking from, I guess, my experience and from my usage is the lack of uh, history or page revisions. So there's actually no history of, you know, the changes that we made, uh, we can't revert back to that last saved change, or let's say we wanna go back a week and have that page, um, use that page again. There's no option for that unless, you know, I'm missing something here. Usually it is somewhere around the save button, but all there is is this uh, preview button, save changes and exit. At the top, we've got, you know, undo, redo, a couple of settings right here, which it's not located at. Uh, we can also add pop-ups and add dedicated pop-ups for it, for that particular page, and then view it in mobile or desktop view. So again, yeah, no page history there. I think that's quite a downside. Um, sometimes I do wanna go back and see what changes I made before, but that's how the page builder works. Let's save changes and we'll go and exit now. To set the actual funnel steps, you can drag where you want it. Let's say the sales page goes first, and then what they see after they actually click it goes to the order form. Now in order to put those order buttons and make it all connect together, it is quite similar to what I shared before. Let's go and edit the sales page once again. And this time we will go back to the actual button. Just like the opt-in form or squeeze page, we can direct it to where we want. We'll click it once and then from here, we can go to send form, show pop-up, open URL or next step URL. Let's click on next step URL because that's what we want happening. It goes to the next step of that sales funnel logic. And then we'll click on save changes, exit. Let's go ahead and preview the funnel step or page and click on the button. That should take me to that order form like you see right here. That's how easy it is. And there's no coding required to copy and paste a certain, you know, short code placeholder or HTML code to that location. But overall, I kind of like how systems funnel work. It's quite simple. There's nothing much more to it than the bare essentials that you need. Of course, there are automations that you can run and do advanced things and set some rules after someone you know, takes an action. But in my opinion, you can create a full fledged sales funnel in one day because it's really easy to use. And that's just my honest opinion based on my own usage too. One downfall with the funnel section is, let's say you go to order forms and you add a new pricing plan. We'll click on plus, let's choose a uh, one shot. And then this one right here, click on save. All right, so it's added 
at this point you feel like it's everything's saved, but let's say you've added your resources, you modified your automation rules, everything on this page, you feel like it auto saves, but in fact it doesn't. What you need to make sure you do or you have to do is click on save sales funnel and then it'll save. And that's one thing to bear in mind. And I think it could be uh, fixed or updated so that it auto saves. Moving along, we've got blogs. What you can create with your free account is one blog and that's more than enough. It doesn't mean one blog article, it means one whole blog site. So you can see the site that I created and if I go to view the blog, this is what's uh, created, right? This is the template that I simply selected and all you need to do is add your blog articles. I'll show you how easy it is if we click on uh, my own blog and then there are some uh, blog posts right here that's really created. Of course, I can delete all this, but let's say you've got a new blog post. So you click on create a blog post and then add your title, short description, the actual path or URL, choose a category, create it, and then write your blog post. In addition to posts, you've got pages. This could be your contact page, your about page, anything you want uh, featured on your site. You've also got categories. Let's say you've got marketing, business, mindset, you can set those categories there. You may be asking, are these blog posts going to be SEO friendly or search engine optimized? Well, if you go into any of your blog posts, you can actually go into settings and then under search engine optimization, you can set your title, set your description, your keywords, the author, a social media image, hide from search engines or not. So if you wanna make sure your page has the highest chance of ranking, you wanna make sure you optimize these sections right here. If you wanna create a blog, simply go back to blogs, click on create a blog and then name your blog. Let's say it's called my blog and then set your blog domain name, set a URL path. Let's say this is under articles or blog. You can name it whatever you want. Choose a template. There are a few to choose from, but it's more so I like this layout and then I'll make modifications later. So if you like this type of layout where it's more visual with images, choose that, you know, you can select it and then from the bottom, click on create. And in just a matter of seconds, you've got your blog created. All you need to do is delete any of the existing blog posts and articles, add your own and then add your own pages such as your about, contact and other pages that you want on there. I'll view the blog that we just created so you can see exactly what it looks like. Here it is. And one thing to note with your free plan is that it shows powered by system.io. That is one thing to note and a caveat with the free plan. And while we're on that note, when you use system to send out your emails, your subscribers will see that sent by system or powered by system at the footer of every email. Next up, you've got automations for more advanced functionality. So with system under automations, you've got rules and workflows. The difference is with rules, it's a simple if this, then that. Whereas with workflows, you can do a whole lot more and a whole lot more complex kind of workflows. I'm on the rules page. If we click on add a rule, you can see the options that you're given. A trigger when this event happens, let's say we'll click on plus. When a tag is added, let's say we add that newsletter tag, then what do you want happening after? We click on the plus under action. We want them to subscribe to a campaign and we can choose a campaign, my email campaign, and then save the rule. So then that all happens on the back end. Workflows on the other hand, is going to give you a lot more options in terms of what you want happening. The actions, even things like the decisions that are made. In this example, I've got, if someone clicks on this email or clicks a link from that email, which was this uh, email called how to record video podcasts and interviews, uh, apply a tag called podcasting. This means that they are interested in podcasting and then I can send something related to that subject. So what I want happening next is wait one day and then send uh, my email called podcasting resources. And this will include resources and links to uh, podcasting uh, sites and tools. And then after that, wait seven days and see if a person uh, clicked on a link from this podcasting resource email. If yes, then send that podcasting uh, course recommendation. Let's say I wanna promote a product uh, of my own or as an affiliate, I can do that with that extra promotional email. Or if they 
did not click on that link, uh, remove them from that podcasting uh, email uh, segmentation, or in this case, a tag. So you can do something as complex as this or as simple as you want it to be, but that option is there if you want to create those types of automations. Moving on, you've got products and sales. With physical products, I would say that system isn't the best for selling physical products if that is your aim because they don't have an option to create that kind of e-commerce store like Shopify where customers can add to cart and then browse around, shop around, add more products to their cart and then check out. I don't see an option for that under funnels or anywhere else. I did try, but uh, you know maybe I'm missing something, but it's not very obvious. Perhaps they don't even have it. I even looked up their uh, systems website to see if they have that feature, but it's not really something that it is aimed for in my opinion. So if you are a physical product seller, I think it's best just to stick with the well-known ones such as Shopify. With that said, I won't be covering physical products because I know many of you are digital product uh, sellers, but let's move on. You've got coupons where you can create your coupons. You got your orders, transactions, where you can see a list of all your orders, all the transactions. So things like that, you've got subscriptions as well, where you can see the transactions in terms of subscriptions, but we've got affiliate invoices and courses, which is one thing you wanna make sure you do if you are selling your online course. Uh, if we click on add a new course, that'll bring up these settings where you set all your settings. And from there, you set up your modules and set up your lectures or your lessons. So you click on add module. Uh, a module is something like this. We've got introduction as a module and then a lecture in this case or a lesson is within that module. So if you wanna add a new lesson, let's say under introduction, you click on add lecture. Let's say demo and you can drip feed it, delaying it. Select a page template. Let's say this one right here, or you can duplicate the last one, but let's click on save. That'll take you to the actual lecture page and then you can modify the lesson based on your actual uh, lesson. Once that is done, we'll click on save changes and then exit. Under introduction, you will see that new lesson appear. To show you what the actual course page looks like from a student's perspective, this is what you see. You've got the introduction, the welcome, you've got module one. You know, I, I just added this one right here, uh, module two, but you've got these different lessons that they can uh, look through, go through, uh, take the lesson, and then let's say we mark the welcome as completed and now that's completed. In terms of modifying this actual course uh, site, there's not much flexibility there. I think you can only change the colors. So I chose black and that's the branding that it's given me. The, in terms of the header there, you've got the different uh, buttons. You can head to course settings and from there, you can then go back, change things like your theme, as I said, to the color matching your brand change the main font. You can manage students by going to products and sales again, then going to students and you can see the progress of each student all listed here. Going to an individual uh, student, seeing where they are enrolled into, you've got Productivity 101. You can revoke access by clicking on dismiss and adding particular courses if you wanna do so. Let's say digital marketing for beginners give them full access, click on add. There's also affiliate program. So if you do wanna set up your own affiliate program where you've got affiliates promoting your courses or your products, you can set it up all right here, which I won't cover, but this is an option if you are looking for a online course platform or more so an online business platform or tool with affiliate program integration. What I wanna run through now are the actual settings. So if you go under your profile, click on settings, some of these settings you wanna make sure you modify and complete. So you've got your profile settings, account settings as well. You've got payment gateways. You have to make sure you integrate either your Stripe or PayPal account. Under mailing settings, there are a couple of advanced options. Let's say you want to use SendGrid, you can add your API key here. So rather than system sending your emails on your behalf using their IP addresses and servers, you can use SendGrid, which is a service that does pretty much that. You can edit your double opt-in confirmation email and also your sender email address, sender name. These are the defaults. So I recommend you add those because by default, these aren't added. One big one is custom domain. So if you wanna use your own www.yourdomain.com, this is where you can go ahead, click on add domain, add that domain name, and then follow this article right here to set up your custom domain. And speaking of integrations, one great thing of system is that it integrates with Zapier, allowing you to then integrate 
thousands of other apps. So you can see the Zapier page right here and the integrations that you can do. Things like Active Campaign or Podia or Facebook Leads, uh, Shopify, integrate with Slack or Airtable. And that's another thing I look for in general with platforms, whether it integrates with Zapier, because that then opens up a whole new world to all these apps and workflows, making my business more streamlined. Now for the big verdict, should you sign up for system? Should you switch over from your existing platform to system and whether you should cancel all those multitudes of different tools and uh, systems and just go with system? The short answer is there's no one size fits all and I'm not here to basically tell you to switch over and cancel all your subscriptions and tools and go with system. I'm basically here to inform you, educate you on this tool as you have seen in this tutorial. But what I wanna share with you are some pros and cons. I'll read it out to you. Let's start off with cons. The first con, especially for my use with email marketing in particular, is that it's quite basic in terms of email segmentation. You can't really segment your email list based on different filters. What would have been a lot better is to have that segmentation and advanced uh, searching and uh, filtering straight or right within that email marketing newsletter that you're creating. Now, because it is an all-in-one system and you are reliant on whatever that system or platform uh, provides to you, you can't really modify or make any flexible changes as you would with something like WordPress. With WordPress, you can modify things, you can get a developer in and make anything, uh, you know, modify anything you want based on your look, your feel, and how you want want your site to function. So with system, you are stuck with the range of templates that they have, and you can't modify things like the transactional emails unless, you know, again, I am missing something. You can't modify the actual course uh, or membership portal. You can make some minor adjustments like the brand colors and the fonts as you saw, but you can't make any other changes in terms of modifying the actual layout of that membership portal. Another con, but it's not really a con for me because I'm not a physical product seller, I'm not really a dropshipper or any of that sort, uh, is the lack of e-commerce integration. So you can't do things like adding things to cart and then letting your customers check out and then having all that in one. So then they don't need to purchase your products individually. Another con is most of the templates are directed towards that direct response kind of uh, offer, right? If you are selling that one product and you wanna sell that one product, it's made for that. So it can be a pro as well, especially if you sell digital products. And another con while we're on the subject is that brand consistency in terms of the templates from sales page or more so from the opt-in form to the sales page to the upsells, there's no you know, coherent kind of template or uh, matching template that you can use. Apart from that, everything else is quite minor and things that can be improved on rather than the actual functionality of it. Now onto the pros. The first pro that I see is the ease of use, the intuitiveness and the simpleness of system. It's a lot more simpler than I thought. I thought when logging in, I'd be inundated, you know, overwhelmed with all these features that it does, you know, promise on the landing page. But as you start using system, you'll see just how easy it is to use. And as I mentioned, you can pretty much create a full-fledged funnel in one day. Another big advantage and one I already mentioned is that there is a free plan. So if you are just a beginner, you're dabbling into online business, online marketing, getting your first course up, there's that option there. And you can build up to 2000 contacts with unlimited amount of students for your online course. And if you're just starting out, one blog is enough, one course is enough. And if you are making sales from your course and your blog, you know, you are more than ready to upgrade to that $27 per month plan, which is that next one above that free plan. Another pro of system is because it is all hosted for you, you don't need to worry about things like plugins and themes and updating them, maintaining them, because that can be time consuming, if not even you know something that you may not understand how to do, which can lead to a vulnerable website open to things like malware attacks and hackers. I'm not saying it's 100% foolproof, but that's one less thing to worry about. As I mentioned, System isn't a platform that is right for everyone, but I would say it is a great option if you are a digital product seller, an info product creator, and one who basically sells virtual goods. At this point, if you're still hesitant about System and whether it's right for you, I would suggest to simply sign up for a free account. There's nothing to lose. 
play around with the tools, play around with setting up your pages and your sales funnels, creating your courses. You know, there's nothing to lose. You don't need to sell anything right now if you're not ready. All right, that pretty much sums up my review of System. I hope it was helpful, insightful, and giving you a better feel for what System is all about. If you do have any other further questions in terms of System, feel free to leave them in the comments box below. Happy to answer them. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, do give this video a thumbs up and looking forward to sharing the next training with you.